but who better than me? Greetings and salutations. Welcome back to another episode of the Hardcore Casual with your boy, Face the Kid. Now I've actually got quite a lot to talk about and not a huge amount of time so I might have to go through a few things pretty quickly but if you could all as usual like and subscribe leave some comments share the vid with friends colleagues enemies whoever just share the content for me just so I can kind of you know sort of get the word out a bit more get the views up get the numbers up get the subscribers up I'd appreciate it okay so a couple quick topics what to start with um, all right well I guess um, we just got the news a little earlier on today. Uh, Dillian White has had to pull out of the Otto Valim fight due to an injury, an injured shoulder. So a lot of people speculating that it might be a little bit of a gamesmanship because he's already got the, the mandatory guaranteed as his next fight because he is the WBC interim champion. And as the way it's worded in the document by the WBC, um, if Fury can't get the 30 day, um, he can't get the sort of that 30 day agreement with Usyk, which he's not going to be able to because they've already got the rematch clause activated, then he has to fight the interim champion next. Now, previously, obviously, they said they wanted Dillian White to be next, but then they said if Dillian White beats Otto Valin, he will be the next challenger. But now because they've put the WBC interim, he has to fight the interim champ, that could have left it up in the air. So there's a lot of people saying, yeah, Dillian, basically he pulled out of that one because the other fight's there waiting for him anyway. Now, my opinion on that is I don't believe it personally. I know Dillian has said he wanted a softer touch after the last Povetkin fight based on what happened before that. But... I also know he needs activity. Dillian does his best when he's kept active and sort of kept running out. When he takes too long, you know, six, seven, eight months out of the ring, he starts to look a bit more ploddy, slow. He doesn't keep up the momentum with his training. You know, right now his body's in a really good condition and he doesn't want to kind of let that slip and, you know, sort of go back to the, the Marius Vat type shapes and, you know, the Robert Hellenius type shapes and whatever. So I don't really think he pulled out because he was I'm not going to say frightened of Otto because that's not the case. But I, I don't think it was that. I would like to believe that it's a legit injury. Speaking of legit injuries, let me let me save that just for a little later. I've got some information that I want to share with you guys in a little bit. Uh, okay, quickly. So Anthony Joshua has been roaming the streets of the US currently going to many different trainers doing sessions with them um, Who have we had so far? We had Virgil Hunter We had Eddie Reynoso We had Ronnie Shields I think now we've got Robert Garcia as well I don't know how many others are planned to be on this 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 tour um, of, of the gyms but a very knowledgeable boxing scribe by the name of October Red. Subscribe to her channel, by the way. Like some very, very good content on there. I give her banter behind the scenes, but she's amazing at what she does. Um, so yeah, subscribe to her. Anyway, but she she believes that there is way too much noise in AJ's head right now. Like going to all these different trainers, like trying to absorb all this new information in the span of what one or two days a piece plus all the old information you've already got how do you choose what to dump and what to keep like you know our brains may be computers but they're not you know they are linked to our sort of emotions and our conscious states on the computer you can transfer everything to a hard drive remove it and delete all the remnants off of the computer and just have it stored over there you can't do that with the brain no matter how many new things you absorb you always will have remnants of other things in the back of your mind and when it comes to fight or flight ultimately you revert back to the things that are just naturally ingrained in your psyche so i don't know how good of a decision that is 
And like she said, I do agree with some of that. But I do think some, some change is needed. I don't think Rob McCracken is the right guy moving forward for like this next stage slash last stage of Joshua's career. He's been doing the same things over and over again. It's worked for the majority of the time. But as we've seen in a couple of fights, even some of the fights that he's won, it's not worked convincingly or it's there's had to be some other things that have been needed and they just haven't been there so ultimately the choice to move is correct if that is actually what's happening and it's not just a big troll session but i've got to assume that you don't just go around to all of these gyms just to hit pads for a bit of fun and then go back to sheffield like i don't know i don't really think that makes sense now a lot of people have had their takes on who they think he should go with a lot of people saying, yeah, Virgil's the guy, or Ronnie Shields is the guy, Reynoso's the guy. Now, let me tell you this. Out of all of the trainers he's seen thus far, Eddie Reynoso is definitely like, the most qualified, probably the best boxing mind overall. Someone who can implement more than just one style of fighting with one style of fighter. Now, there is the slight language barrier there. Now, Reynoso... Against popular belief, he can actually speak English. It's just not great. He basically speaks English the same way Canelo used to speak English, where he just wasn't confident in the stuff he was saying because he didn't want to sound foolish or sound like an idiot, didn't like how certain words came out, so he stepped with the translator. Now, Reynoso is the same. In front of the camera, translator's there. But I know behind the scenes, he will sort of, you know, give certain phrases in English you'll say certain things in English to communicate with people that don't speak Spanish and then ultimately you'll get like the translator for the more complex instructions that he can't break down in English but that language barrier would be a problem initially because you're not especially if you have to do things in such a, a quick time frame so it doesn't really behoove man to do that off the bat right now that would have to be sort of a more of a long-term journey with a much longer gap in between sort of the first Usyk fight last month and the next one coming up in what uh, March time in that sort of mid-March early April whatever I don't think that's enough time for him to really sort of understand and change the body mechanics and change the fluidity of shots etc so ultimately I don't really see that one popping off um, now if we're talking about Ronnie Shields I'm going to keep this one short and sweet If AJ was to ever go with Ronnie Shields He's just auditioning for his chin to get checked immediately Like if you look at the majority of the fighters in Ronnie Shields camp Jamal Charlo being a prime example He's pretty much looked like dog shit in the majority of his last fights Minus the Devry Vincenco fight and even that fight, he was flattering to deceive because Devianchenko basically just come off of the loss, been out of the ring for a year, took a beating in the in the Golovkin fight. He just wasn't at the races, so it made him look even better. But we saw we saw what happened with Montiel. Like that was supposed to be light work and it was made very much a hard night's work. It was made a lot harder than it needed to be. Some of the tactics, some of the some of the instructions just weren't really meshing. And I don't think that that is the person you go with ultimately. Like So, no, nah, scrap that. Now, my personal opinion, I've said, I've been saying for the last couple of weeks, and you can check G-Man Boxing, some of his live streams, like I've, I've been on there, I've said it. Um, I've put it in the comments of several other channels. I think... Personally, I would go with Haseem Rockman, The Rock, personally. That's who I would go with, just because I feel there's enough of a grit in there, plus a technical uh, technical ability to be able to bring out some of the more trapped attributes of AJ. Obviously, Rock was a, a, a smaller guy naturally. He was like about, I think he was, what, 6'3"? Six, six, um, but the way he moved and the way he fought, he was able to sort of, fight with maximum extension on his shots because he wasn't always the tallest but he always seemed to be able to get off his work 
be able to sort of close distance with his shots a lot quicker than his opponents could and it wasn't from inside fighting so I feel like someone who can actually get you focused on what's happening at the end of your shots as opposed to having to step into a potential kill box to do that I think he's kind of the guy for that for that job especially even if you see the work he was doing with Michael Hunter I know they're not together anymore but that some of the work in, in those fights like the Bacoli fight the the Kuzman fight even the Povetkin fight when he was staying on the outside and the movement that he was uh, that he was landing, I feel like that is the kind of person he needs to be with. Now, there's been a couple other shouts which are pretty decent. I've heard some people say Jonathan Banks. I mean, if you want to be the second coming of Klitschko, yeah, I, I could see that. But Banks will focus more on technical proficiency, movement, safety, and I don't think that's necessarily the gel for the next Usyk fight because there's certain things you have to do to be able to nullify what Usyk's doing and trying to box him defensively staying defensively responsible looking for openings is probably not gonna be as effective for you so I don't necessarily see that one being a good fit for that particular fight but as an overall philosophy it makes sense I wouldn't necessarily um, I wouldn't count it out per se but I said Hasim Rockman but my second choice if it wasn't him and this is if he would be prepared to train a heavyweight is Brian Bowman McIntyre now quite frankly I mean look we see the people that are in that gym there's champions in that gym you've got Terence Crawford in there you've got Jamel Herring from time to time even though it's not for right now, but you'll have Shakur Stevenson back in there once that little thing's gone at the end of the weekend. I'm sure he'll be back in that gym. Like He trains what AJ says he's looking for. He trains people that are dogs, like people that, are, that have killer instinct, that go for the gusto, but ain't just in there moving reckless. So I feel that would be a pretty good, um, that would be a good fit for him, especially if he, if he really is trying to get the dog back out, but do it in an efficient way. Stop necessarily moving when you don't need to move, falling for certain things you don't need to fall for, making sure you're first in the, in the exchanges. That's the kind of thing that Bowman will teach. And some of the drills and stuff look very unorthodox. He also does a lot of wrestling in the gym as well. You know, Crawford used to be an amateur, uh, amateur. Uh, I think he was a, a, a national champion in wrestling as well in, in the amateurs when he was younger. Obviously, he's still got some of that in him, so you can learn some of that when it comes to making sure you can kind of get in close, lean on someone, manoeuvre them about the ring the way you want. If you, if you have to be the bigger man in the ring, these are kind of things that you can do. These are tricks you can learn, and it makes sense to be around people that just have those natural tricks so that's my second choice third choice is also someone who basically has gone up against the uh the papachenko style previously and succeeded and that's joey gamash who ring iq will champion a lot and you know my boy lennox will champion a lot saying he's basically the one with the blueprint to nullify those southpaws nullify what they do and if you stick to the game plan, ultimately, as Tiafimo did, you pretty much will come out successful. Now, I like Joey, and I think that's a very, very good shout as well. Tactically, it makes sense. Um, he is very much a tactician. I'm just not sure if he can, again, get AJ fluid and thinking about things so they become second nature as opposed to having to concentrate on the game plan on the game plan because as we saw he got burned out from trying to do that in the first fight maybe that's not what his brain needs maybe he needs to be able to i almost want to say preact instead of react to what's going on be proactive like initiate what's going to happen instead of reacting to it and then getting yourself tired afterwards so I mean, that's my opinion on it. Personally, like I said, those those are good choices. I mean, Ishmael Salas is a, is a great choice. I reckon that would probably be a great fit for AJ. But, you know, he's 
got his stable already. I don't know what his commitments would be like. Yes, AJ would be the biggest, like the biggest paycheck he could have, but he's still got Joe Joyce. He's still got um, well, he's still got Ugas and a couple of other guys. He's still sort of in uh, Dubai and the United Arab. Emirates like UAE he's training people over there as well um, so I don't know how much focus he'd have on it but ultimately like I said Hasim Ruckman, uh, Bomak and Joey Gamash probably for me would be like my top three picks if you had to have a, a next trainer because apparently I've heard that um, Angel Fernandez must remain as a part of the team as a part of a condition so we'll see what happens with that uh, last thing I want to touch on just before I kind of get to the main point of this video uh, So again, we were going back to the zone uh, the design issues from the other day and Obviously, I was talking about the pay-per-view fu the pay-per-view functionality and everyone was like, oh You said the pay-per-view was dead X Y and Z X Y and Z Now I agree like look that is what you said. There's no point trying to rewrite history. It was said like just say look that's what we thought but certain things have come to light we realize that for certain issues we have to have this functionality and it needs to be it needs to be there rather than trying to remix what you said in the past that being said i've got a free bit of advice in the marketing strategy of of that now ultimately the whole point of the zone is to be subscription based right similar to netflix and everything else so right now in the uk we're paying 7.99 in the us they're paying 19.99 or 100 for the year i'm waiting for us to have the yearly option by the way so hurry up with that please now here's what i would say if you've got these mega events right that you can only see you know sort of once a year twice a year max and they must have the pay-per-view functionality here's what i would do when the event is announced initially you give the pay in public so not the people that already subscribe to you because they need to get it for free and i will i will stick by that because they're already paying and invested in you that you already get steady money from them on a monthly basis but what you do is you say to the pay in public up until whatever date so let's say for instance I don't, I'm just pulling this out of the air. I don't actually know if it's a Saturday or not. But say, for instance, the fight lands on the 25th of March, 2022, right? You announce the fight in January, say the second or third week of Jan. So you give people up until the end of February to sign up on the 7 99 as part of their zone subscription. And if you sign up before the end of the end of February, you get this own seven ninety nine, all the content previous, plus you also get the AJ fight or where whoever was gonna be pay per view, right? At the end of that period, so on the start of March now, that's when you say, okay, this is the price for this month, due because this is the fight now that's happening. So then you say whatever it's gonna be. I would say, look, you should really do something like thirty ninety nine, you know, or something like that, or eleven ninety nine. But okay, say you're gonna do twenty pound, right? Okay, so for this month, if you sign up now, you get you will pay ninety. Actually, no, do it two weeks. You get for the first two weeks, you sign up. It's thirteen ninety nine, but you get everything that's happening this month. And then it will go down to regular price or you can cancel it at the end of the month, right? If you don't necessarily want it. The week of the fight, you say, all right, it's $22.99. If you just want to watch the fight, you still get, um, you'll get a, a month's subscription from that date that you start up until the date you finish. And then you cancel or you carry on at the $7.99 rate moving forward. If you want subs and subscribers, that's essentially what you do. You get you make sure that it's at a high price point right towards the end, but you give everyone the opportunity to get it for the low price point, the several uh, the month in the month before or the month before that or up until a certain point. So everyone has the option of being able to watch it as a part of the regular subscription for seven ninety nine, and you increase your subscriber base that way because most people are going to jump on it early, even if then there's not much happening the month before guess what 
you've got that month, you've got the second month, so you've actually got that £17 worth of subscription that you probably wanted for them to purchase that fight in the first place. If half the people don't watch the content, then you've just essentially got free money. And then if they decide to drop off, then you've already made the money you wanted to make for that pay-per-view to cover those costs and make whatever profit. And if they stay on, then now you've still got new subscribers who are going to be with you, keeping that content fresh and keeping your production, your productions moving, moving forward. It's a free piece of game for you. Uh, I'll probably send this to Ade and get him to send it to the higher ups and they can thank me later. Right. Lastly, so I want to talk about the, the news, right? That I've, I heard this news about three or four days ago. And I sat on it because I thought, okay, I just kind of want to just be in the know. Okay, I know this information. I'll keep it to myself and see what happens. Um, but I've decided, no, I want to actually put it out there because I just want people to kind of understand what kind of goes on behind the scenes a lot of the time in some of this boxing. Now, again, from a, from a, a casual point of view, some of this stuff you probably wouldn't know. You probably wouldn't even care. But this is actually quite interesting and it's quite big. Now, I can't speak particularly for what happened earlier on in the year with Ryan Garcia and the whole supposed mental health issues. But based on this information that I've got now, it leads me to think that there could be something additional taking place or, have, or that took place back then. Right, so we all know Ryan Garcia has claimed that he's pulled out of the Jojo Diaz fight, which was supposed to be happening on the 27th of November due to a hand injury that he required surgery for. Right, so I've been told that, yeah, okay, he may have had minor surgery to his hand, but that wasn't the actual issue for the, for the pullout. He didn't need... The surgery wasn't necessary, that he was still functioning. So whatever it was that has taken place with that hospital photo is not anything that was, you know, career threatening or career delaying or whatever. So what I've been told is the reason that Ryan Garcia pulled out of the Jojo Diaz fight is because Oscar De La Hoya is using him... And the rest of the Golden Boy promotion stable at the minute as leverage to try and get a new deal with a different broadcaster. So essentially, what that's basically going to mean is from now till the end of the year, there will be no more Golden Boy promotion cards on the zone until either the zone re up with a much improved contract or Oscar De La Hoya can find himself a new home of broadcasters. I've been told by very good sources, people that are actually have been in rooms or who have, who have, you know, are friends with certain execs and certain movers and shakers within the industry in America, that Oscar's been to several meetings with several higher ups of many different broadcasters. ESPN has been one, Showtime has been one, and I think like the CBS network has been one as well, but I'm not sure on, on that last one. I know that Fox was potentially, it was there was potential to be a meeting there, but I think just because of the fact that um, Fox don't really seem to be throwing as much money into the boxing game as they were previously even though they've accepted the one year extension with PBC I'm not sure if they were one but I definitely know ESPN was an option um, Oscar's whole mission to start with was to try and move everyone over to Triller at the end of the contract which I think was supposed to run out in November anyway but obviously we all, we've all seen kind of what's happened at Triller recently so that's basically like a open and shut case now, null and void, no entry, no point, right? So believe me when I say you will not see any of Golden Boy stars again on the zone until you either hear that a new deal has been reached between Golden Boy and the zone 
or until you hear the fact that Oscar has now found himself a new home with um, a new uh, with a new broadcaster and will be broadcasting all of his events from there. So that's why Mikey, uh, not Mikey, sorry, that's why Ryan got um, got pulled out because ultimately they said, well, you don't need this, but we don't really want you to fight on here when we don't have a solid foundation. You're not going to see Virgil Ortiz again before the end of the year. Probably not in January either. Jojo, because Jojo's not one of the main stars, like you might, he might get that um, the Devin Haney fight. So you might end up seeing Jojo, but he's not one of the marquee names. You won't see Virgil and you won't see Ryan. Guaranteed for the rest of the year. Probably not until sort of early springtime. And that is un and that's only because they are looking for a new a new um a new broadcast deal and as soon as you hear the news of a new broadcast deal that's when you will hear news of a new virgil ortiz fight and a new ryan garcia fight so yeah i wanted to put that out there so people so people knew um that also leads to a possible speculation that we all said earlier on in the year that the mental health excuse was bullshit now you know some people that you can't really say because when it's mental health you get you get an automatic excuse. I said quite frankly I thought it was bullshit from the start, and it was just that he was. I felt that he was just scared of fighting certain people because he didn't want to get beat, or Oscar necessarily didn't want him to get beat, and he thought that certain people would beat him, um, which is why he pulled out of the previous fight earlier on in the year. Who was it against Javier Fortuna? He was supposed to fight the mental health, but then the following day he was on what Insta, Snapchat, video with his girl on the beach, like just chilling. And I would say to myself, well, if you're struggling with anxiety and and pressure, you would want to get away from the spotlight, not go further into it, and be modeling like alcohol brands and. You know, just being in the public eye, being on the beach, like just sh exposing yourself to the world. Yet, you know, you're suffering from whatever. That's what I thought. But now the speculation is maybe not that you were scared of the fight. You were just being told, well, there's no real need for you to fight right now because we don't. We're gonna move you over to. At this point, we're gonna move you to Trilla, and you're gonna make three, four times what you're making now. The Trilla fight. And the contract with Triller didn't happen because Oscar De La Hoya didn't get to fight Vita Bell for. So, and they were, we see the shambles is happening there. So, he's out that payday. But he was getting into this next one. Oh, but, yeah, the money is not really right on our contract. Let's wait. Let's wait for, you know, we'll bring you back in the gimme next year on a bigger platform with bigger money, bigger revenues, where we can even do pay-per-view as well. Because I think that's another thing they are wanting that pay-per-view stream or the potential to at least be able to um bolster some of the some of the purses rather than having to spend cash up 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 front but that's a speculation part but the, the information that i'm giving you is 100 percent credible and i can i can stake i'll stake my reputation on it whether i've got a great one in the game or not <laughs> i'm telling you that's the reason why I've Ryan was pulled out. It's nothing to do with the hand injury. It's to do with negotiations and leverage tactics against the current platform to either produce a better contract or a new platform to get a better deal overall for the for the um, for the promotion. But again, that's me done for tonight. Uh, what's, what's the time? I'll probably go watch a little bit of the football or at least some of the highlights. Um, I'm tired, so I'm going to go get me some rest. Uh, but for right now, as I said, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, all that good stuff. Um, get the word out. Let Make sure you you, you uh, push this one to, to everyone else. But as I, uh, as I always say, like, thanks for watching. And for right now, Hardcore Casual, out.